Lord once again. If so, come on and clap those hands, everybody, everywhere. Amen. It's no greater place to be than in the house of the Lord today, and I am excited to be with you once again. Listen, as you came in, we want to make sure that everyone received a copy of this month's um, Sunday uh, handout here, our, our Cathedral Connections. Uh, make sure that you have that. If you don't, ask one of our ushers or serving brothers, and they'll make sure that you have a uh, copy. It'll keep you informed of everything that is happening here at City Cathedral, not only for this week, but for the month ahead. And uh, all of you who are watching us and tuning in to us virtually this morning, we welcome you into our service once again, and we hope that you can come and worship with us in the future, in person. We have ser services at our Woodlands campus at 8.30 every Sunday morning morning and then you can join us here at Houston every Sunday morning at 10 30 a.m. We look forward to seeing you in the place real soon and everyone who is joining us in person we ask that while you're in service today that you keep your mask on and that mask should cover both your mouth and your nose. It helps us to maintain the safety and the sacredness of our worship. Attention all brothers, don't miss the Motley Kenosis Men's Fellowship on Tuesday, July 5th at 7 p.m. at the Houston campus or Thursday, July 7th at 7 p.m. at the Woodlands campus. It's a time of fun, food, and fellowship. You've got to be there. Join the First Touch Ministry in their annual celebration on Sunday, July 10th at 3 p.m. here at the Houston campus. Come and show your appreciation for our ushers, servant brothers, parking lot, and greeters ministries. Don't you dare miss it. Mark your calendars now. Pentecostal Whiteout Sunday is July 31st. Everyone is encouraged to wear white and come prepared for a mighty move of God. Don't you dare miss it. Attention all ladies, register today for the Colonial Sorority Annual Anniversary Retreat. Celebrating 23 years of service on Saturday, July 9th. There's still space available. For more information, contact your campus business office. Do you want to further your Christian education? Enroll today in the Kananea Theological College. Scholarships are available. Please sign up today or call the business office for more information. Exciting! Do you love Starbucks? Then no need to stop before church to get your fix. Our very own coffee cafe is open each Sunday. Stop in and enjoy before or after service. And I'm your announcing clerk, Ricky Williams. Thank you for worshiping with us here at the City Cathedral Church.
goes like this. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. That's it. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Now let's sing, oh precious, oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood. Next verse. For my cleansing, this I see, nothing but the blood. Yes. For my pardon, this my plea, nothing. Now let's declare it. Oh, precious, oh, is the blood that makes me. Come on and clap those hands. Please remain standing for our word walk with Minister Jones. Blessings and good grace morning to everyone. We do know it's God's grace and mercy that we are here today. So we just want to say thank you, Father. Our word walk will be coming from Psalms 93, verses 1 through 5. I'll be reading uh, minister, and you'll be congregation. The Lord reigns. He is robbed in majestic. The Lord is robbed in majestic and war armed with strength. Indeed, the world established firm and secure congregation. The seas have lifted up, Lord. Have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Congregation. All your statues, Lord, stand firm. Holiness is adorn your house and end this days. Amen. Amen. Continue standing as we declare our church covenant. It's at the bottom of your handout, and we'll begin its reading as one collective group. Let's read. We covenant with our pastor and members of the City Cathedral Church family to pray for Bishop Leroy J. Woodard, Jr., Lady Gail Woodard, and members of the City Cathedral Church daily and visitors today. Attend the worship and Bible study opportunities weekly. Request the presence of the unsaved, unchurched, uncommitted, and undecided weekly to uphold the ministry of restoration by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and giving hope to the hopeless. Tithe and give my offering systematically with God being my help. Everybody join me and say amen. It's time to lift up the name of Jesus as we go further with the City Cathedral praise team. Come on, let's lift up.
worship him. Come on, you know, let's sing that together. Everybody sing, when I come. When I come into his presence, I humble myself. I humble myself. Come on, say, I lift up both my hands. I lift up both my hands. And I, I begin. What do you do? I begin to worship him. Come on, all the worshipers in the building. Will you just say, I worship him? I worship him. Let's sing that again, everybody. When I, when I come into the first thing I do, I humble myself. I humble myself. And as I begin to humble myself, I lift up both my hands. I lift up both my hands. And I. And I, I begin, begin to worship him. To worship him. Come on, you got it. Everybody sing, I worship him. I worship him. There you go. Everybody lift your voice. Say for all. For all. Set me free. Redeem and said, He set me free. Me and because, and because, hey, and because, just because, hey, and because, and because, hey, just because, just because, just because, and because, and because. you came here to worship him and because 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 just because just because he is God And bless the name of the Lord. Come on and bless the name. And oh, hallelujah. Let me tell you why you're blessing him when it makes no sense. And because, and because, that's why I'm glorifying him. That's why I'm praising him. And because, and because, and because. Oh, 
And because, and because he, he is God. I got in a hurry from the Woodlands campus to get here and to let you know that if we let God be God, lean over to your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, let him be God. Go ahead and tell him. Come on, yeah, yeah. Come on, I've been I've been saved too long to play with God. I I've been delivered too long to give him a patty cake, a pee-wee hummus. I came the blessing. Minister Hannah, doesn't matter how I feel, doesn't matter what it looks like, God is still God. that when you got saved, you didn't lose your dance. You just dance with selected music. get a little moment because he's been too good to me he, he's he's been too excellent and he's been too gracious dr. Jessica he's been too he's been too good because my past doesn't necessarily logically mirrors my present. Because I should have been disconnected. But God said, not so. Another time. I, I just want to, I want to welcome our live streamers, our virtual audience. Come on, CCC, let's give it up with a live welcome with our live streamers. I'm gonna have you, I don't mean to be negative, I'm gonna have you to be Catholic. I'm gonna ask you to sit down just for a second. Our First Touch Ministry is strategically placed. I want to welcome you. I know. Um, I wanna welcome you, all of our visitors. If you're visiting for the first or second time, if you visit for the third, you're no longer a visitor. But if you're visiting for the first, maybe second time, I want to, I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you. Would you stand? Would you stand if you're visiting for the first, maybe the second time? I want to welcome you. I want to give you. I want to give you something. I want to give you something in your hand. I want to give you something in your hand. I want to give you something in your hand. 
there you will read some information on the ministry, the city cathedral, the city city columns publication. It gives you all of the happenings that's going to be done in the month of July. And uh, I want to say, I know that Brother Lewis, the city cathedral choir will be singing shortly after I preach, and they can sing. Thank you, Minister Darian. God bless you. I don't ever like when he go out of town. Somebody say, don't be selfish, Bishop. Don't be selfish. Uh, listen, uh, happy fourth to you. And I hope that you get some much needed relaxation, some decomposition. Uh, we need to reset and uh, restart too as well. You work so hard. If you're like me, I've been working all my life. I think when my father found out that Gladys and I could walk. All right. Um, did you bring those weaponries? Uh, I didn't say an open carry. Uh, the weaponry in terms of God's holy writ. All right, I want you to get excited in that. I do teach us a little bit differently, uh, but I want you to place it in your wave hand. And uh, yes told you you're going to be Catholic, you're going to stand up and down. I, I want you to stand for the reading of God's holy writ and place it in your hands and give it away for the life of the Christian symphony and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Uh, I'm about to receive. I'm, I'm ready to hear incorruptible, irrefutable word of God. I will never be the same. Never, 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 never be the same. Come on, in Jesus' name. Come on, give it away for the life of the Christian symphony. God bless you. Sister Ebony, God bless you. I've been calling that baby Ebony. Lord, help. Um, go with me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke. The book of Luke. Thank you, worship and praise team. They've been hanging out with me since Woodlands campus. If this is the same church, one church and multiple campuses, what God did in Woodlands, he, he's already doing right here. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, I know it's on widescreen, but um, look at verse 41. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 41. I asked Jackie, and she did it, Deacon Thomas. She bought the podium. <laughs> but it's six inches short. <laughs> All right, I just had to get that out. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm... <laughs> All right. Okay. Stay safe, Bishop. Every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years of age, he went up to the feast according to the custom annually. After the feast, Angelus Davis was over while his parents were returning. Minister Rose, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem but they weren't aware of it. Thinking that he was with cousin them and traveling and all of that, and then they began to turn around looking for him amongst, among the relatives and friends. But when they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple courts. Look what Jesus was doing, Minister Hannah. Sitting among the, the teachers, the rabbis, listening to them, asking them questions. And everyone who had heard Jesus was amazed of his understanding. Twelve years old. And his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, he was rebuked and uh, why have you treated us like this? You've 
we thought that somebody had kidnapped you. Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you for three days. We thought that you were with my dear. We thought that you were with uncle. Why were you searching for me? And he did it not out of disrespect. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? How soon do you forget, Mother Mary, that when the Spirit of God endowed your womb and say that you shall be with child and you shall give him a name and his name shall be called Emmanuel. You remember, don't you? You remember that your conception had nothing to do with Joseph's osmosis. You remember that I came, that, uh, that unto me a child is born, but a son is given. You do remember that I don't have none of your blood. I just needed your womb so I can enter the earth realm. You do remember that the birth of me was not the beginning of me, but it was the legal entry to the God realm. You do remember the child had to be born, but the son was already grown. You do remember that then he went down to Nazareth with them and he was obedient to them but his mother treasured all these things in her spirit and this is the caveat in verse 52 and Jesus grew in wisdom in stature in the favor with God and with men show you right I like to use as a clarion to this little piece save the space sit with me save the space all right you may be seated or save space God bless you save space did I tell you my podium is five inches shorter and I do wear glasses all right uh, save space, say with me, save space. Um, in, the, in, the, in the Greek vernacular, the Greek tongue, uh, the Greek terminology for the word space is where you get the word diastema. Say with me, diastema. It is D-I-A-S-T-E-M-A. D-I-A-S-T-E-M-A. Diastema deals with to spread it out or, or to embrace intervals or to press pause or to have some intermission. You know what that is, that when you go to the ball game, the, even the basketball players take a break, allow you to have some popcorn and pizza and hot dog or something. And now they got these, these concession stands you can get barbecue and seafood and carry it on and the nachos. That's, that's having a sense of intermission. This particular word, space, is pregnant with the understanding, Deacon Allaire, uh, that we have to spread it out. Say it with me. You have to spread it out. Come on, say it once again. You just have to spread it out. In other words, I want you to leave some room for, for grace. Leave some space for grace. Um, leave, uh, leave some wiggle room for an exit plan. Don't get so preoccupied and be trapped in the crevices of life, in the corners of life, in the clutches of life. You got to leave some room. Like, I'm telling you now, that we live in some perilous times. And when you're at the exponade, it's important that you leave some space between the car in front of you. Because you never know when you have to exit quickly. You tailgating and all of that, that that's not good for you. You want to leave some space just in case you have to maneuver and make a quick turn. I'm not saying road rage and all of that, but make sure that you uh, maneuver. But the Tory is a military person. We got military people in here. He'll tell you that when you walk in a public place, you need to know where the exits are. Don't be so hungry until you go to the restaurant and you don't even know how to exit out. The front door ain't the only exit. 
And so I want you to save space. Sit with me, save space. So if I were to paraphrase this little piece, and we have some time, if I were to paraphrase this little piece, I would say, uh, Sister Beatriz, don't allow the ills, spills, and thrills of life to take full occupancy of your life. Don't, don't allow that. Doesn't matter what it looks like, don't allow it to take full occupancy or residency of your life. That's still wiggle room to maneuver. Um, if I were to translate this piece to make it just a wee bit more simpler, I would say, be balanced. Everyone say with me, be balanced. Uh, be balanced. It's important that you be balanced of life. And I think as we uh, peruse through this teachment, we would understand the need to really be balanced. Uh, believe you me, I've been saved a long time, but I've not lost the need to walk in balance. You got to live a life of balance. Say with me, you must live a life of balance. That's, just, that's, a, that's an important child of God. So in this little, if I got some people who understand uh, composition discipline, you would understand that there is a thesis that I want to suggest to you that's going to support this argument. I get on the media ministry nerve because I constantly put this mic down. Uh, forgive you me. But in this little preposition, this little thesis, let me challenge you with this little statement, and I want you to write it on, on the canvas of your mind or even write it on your a little piece of paper. When you have a balance or a lifestyle of balance, you're more likely to do three things. Uh, when you have a balanced lifestyle, you're more likely to do three things, one of many, but three of which. Number one, you're more likely to provide more meaning in your life. You're more likely to provide more meaning. That's the first point. More meaning to your life. Number two, you're more likely to practice moderation. And then, of course, number three, you're more likely to polish your moment. Um, you're more likely to do that in this little thesis. And that you're more likely to provide uh, a more meaning, meaning in your life. You know, it's really called getting a perspective, embracing your perspectives and perspectives in life. My dad used to always tell me, Brother Armstrong, that when you have the right perspective, you probably end up having the right conclusion. That our being balanced and living a life of balance, a life of leaving room, a wiggle room for an exit, a wiggle room to be balanced. It is because you are persons of perspective. It's important that you, do, that you embrace having a life of perspective. All right, go with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes. Did I tell you my podium is a little low? Oh, uh, all right. So I'm just trying to get it out of my system. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, and this is the balance of life. Here it is. Solomon is, he discovered that all of these comforts and all of these situations are really meaningless when we could compare to what really is of meaning. It's just having the wisdom of God, is knowing him beyond all of these comforts and all of the situations. I believe that this is the epitome of living a balanced life. He says, there's a time for everything. Say with me, there's a time for everything. And then it goes on to say there's a time and a season for everything. Right now, and you may not know, you are living in time. Because time is a constant dynamic. It doesn't stop for anything. You're living in time. But your season may not be because the word season is zimmon. Say with me, zimmon. Z-E-M-A-N. It means your appointed moment. You may be in a constant dynamic of ever-changing as it relates to time, but you have to wait on your appointed time. And so I don't want you to get lost in the sauce of being discouraged because your appointed 
occasion hadn't come yet. That's all right. Just stay in time. And as Paul says, that you need to redeem the times for the days of evil. He's not talking about bad days. He said the days are perishing, but keep on waiting because your season will eventually show up. That's very important that we live a balanced life because oftentimes uh, issues come, upheavals of life come, trouble come, and it makes you bail out and it makes you to become imbalanced. And then it says here, there's a time to be born, there's a time to die, there's a time to plant, there's a time to uproot, there's a time to kill, there's a time to heal. Let me just like qualify kill. Bishop told me it's time to kill. Uh, it's time to kill, it's time to heal. I ain't talking about killing folk. Killing some bad habits. Look at y'all ain't saying that now. Okay. All right. There's a time to tear down, there's a time to build, there's a time to weep, there's a time to laugh, there's a time to moan, there's a time to dance, there's a time to scatter stones, and there's a time to gather them, and there's a time to embrace, there's a time to refrain, to avoid, uh, or hold back. There's a time to search, there's a time to give up, there's a time, there's a time, there's a time to keep, there's a time to throw away some stuff that you need to do in the closet. Uh, I'm not a hoarder, but it certainly looks like there's some hoarderism. Some of the stuff you got to throw away because it's out of style. God would only bless you to give away that which is still in style that you still think you can wear. Time to keep is a time to throw away. Okay, that didn't work. Time to tear down. There's a time to tear. There's a time to cry. There's a time to mend. There's a time to, to be silent. There's a time to speak. There's a time to love. There's a time to hate. To hate what God hates. What God hates. There's a time for war and there's a time for peace. Whatever war can do, peace can always do better. In other words, that to live a balanced life is to get a perspective. Sit with me, to get a perspective. This particular scripture, Dr. Alexander, deals with don't allow a single dynamic or event in your life to consume all of your life. As we plant, we uproot. As we cry, we laugh. As you are sick, you will get healed. You see, it is an ever-evolving dynamic, and so you have to embrace the need to live a balanced life because when one door shuts, automatically another door will open. You know, somebody leave your life, just keep it open. Somebody going to come in. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, you ain't the only fish in the pond now. Uh, somebody going to like this. So, 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 so we need to provide true meaning in life, tr true perspective so that your conclusion won't be some endings, uh, won't be some, uh, you know, finality because you feel that, uh, because I'm experiencing this single dynamic, this, is, this should take up my entire day. When you are experiencing perspective, it will ignite your creativity. All right, go with me to the book of Isaiah. Lord help. Chapter 40, verse 19, and it says, As for an idol... A statue, a statue, a metal worker cast it and goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashions silver chains for it. That is within their reach because they have gold. They're able to overlay the statue or the framework with gold. But the next verse in verse 20 says, but a person too poor. To present such offering of verse 19 selects cedar wood that does not rot. And they look for a skilled craftsman that has carpentry skills, that knows how to build it and erect it to where it will not topple. What does that mean, Bishop? What do you mean? Because it looks like it's not relevant to perspective. Well, just because you don't have what they have, get a perspective. You can become creative and find something that works for you. I may not have gold to overlay the idol, but I certainly have 
an axe that can cut down the right tree. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, live a balanced life. Now, don't allow the comforts of others to discount and downplay what you have as deficient. Uh, I want to let you know that's something that God can help you with if you are willing to be creative, if you're willing to stay in your perspectives. You can cut down the tree, and the right kind of tree would help you to erect just as tall, just as sturdy as the one that has been overlaid with gold. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, get a true perspective now. Just because you are having a little Perry moment, uh, the worst of times, uh, all at the same time, the worst of times, the best times, all at the same time, doesn't mean that God has written you off. Just because you don't have gold now doesn't mean that you won't have gold next time. Can I tell you this in this translation? Use what you have. Go ahead and tell them. Come on. Use what works for you. Use what works for you. It's very important that we do that. The only way that we can really uh, process that piece from a sense of relevance is when you embrace 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Come on, media ministry. I'm there. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by error of the lawless people that can upset your position of stability. Show me a person of balance, I'll show you a person that is secure. But oftentimes we become imbalanced because we've been hanging around fickle and imbalanced. I got to watch that word, you know, fickle people. Look at y'all acting new. Come on now. We, we've, been, we've, been, we've been hanging around imbalanced people, and when you hang around imbalanced people, you run the risk of acting imbalanced. You know, if you hang around drama queens and drama queens, it, it'll make you dramatic too as well. You know, so it's important that you become very uh, preferential of the persons that you spend your most time with because the persons that you spend the most time with, you become that person. The Bible says iron sharpens iron, so another man sharpens another man. You ain't never cussed and curse a day in your life, but because you've been hanging around cusses and curses, you find yourself teeth and tongue cutting the word with your saved self. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, save for curse too. I know it. You let the devil hit them the wrong way. Shoop, bop, bop. Unknown tongues, I get it. So this translation, child of God in Second Peter, it talks about getting a proper assessment, a proper perspective. Don't go victim vomit because you've, you've gotten off rhythm, you've gotten off your stability because you've been hanging around with jacked up folk. Some of us act new. I don't know why it's not working for me. Because you've been hanging around with not working for me people. You, you got to hang around some folk that's going where you want to be. You, that are becoming what you want to be in the Lord. You want to be saved? Hang around some saved people. And let me help you with that. And I get you. I understand. I got you. I know you already saying, but see, you don't understand. I love the Lord, but some of the fruit that I'm seeing from saved folk, I don't kind of like want that. I know where you are with that. I feel the same way because my next point deals with if we are to realize our balanced place, not only should we provide meaning or more meaning, but secondly, we should practice moderation. I believe that... Um, Extreme people that are doing the right thing can ultimately be the wrong thing. I promise you me, I'm not, in, um, I'm not outside of God's holy right. Too much of anything ain't good. Amen. See, y'all ain't with me here. Um, all right, okay. Um, balanced people are more happier because their resolves are more realistic. Balanced people will always say it is what it is. Stuff like that happens. Balanced people. I'm talking about spirit-filled balanced people. But those that are teetering 
with imbalance in that spirituality, look at what the word says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 16. Did I tell you my podium is low? It says, do not be overly righteous, neither overly wise, because it will destroy you. What do you mean, Pastor, to be overly obedient to the word that it can ultimately destroy? That's not what the scripture says. It says that when you don't live a life or practice moderation, even in your saved state, it can cause you to not embrace your humanity. And what happens is when we don't embrace our humanity in our saved state, then we run the risk of embracing being unmerciful. Because oftentimes we forget our struggle because we've been so preoccupied with other folks' struggle. It says that you got to practice more. Listen, you can drink too much water. You can, you can eat too much rabbit food. You can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can become too extreme, even with your saved self. You got to take yourself out. You got to enjoy yourself. You can't just, just be overboard. It's all Bible, all Bible. How you doing? Oh, praise the Lord. Praise. I ain't asked you that. How you doing? Come on, have a decent, have something. Because when you are not, as merciful, it's because you've been hanging out with spirituality too long and you're not having a balanced disposition. You, 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 you're, you're not having a balanced disposition. And sometimes the Lord will reserve uh, your life. He will reserve you to experience a situation in your life that demands you to be merciful on others based on how God was merciful on you. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, I have to be merciful on you because I experienced a situation. Had God not brought me out, I wouldn't be here. And listen to me. We got some pretty resumes. We want to we wanna make everybody to believe that we came out of grandma's womb, machine gunning the devil, talking in tongues. But I didn't come out. Of, I have a background. I have a rough background. I used to cuss, shoot, do drugs. I wish I had somebody, but I ain't doing it no more. And so that's why I can talk about it with a first class attitude because I don't have no flesh on them bones. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, all of us got some skeletons in the closet. You ain't been saved that long. That's beneath me. That's because the devil ain't touch your bunion. The devil ain't touch you hard enough. The devil knows how to hit you that'll make you even question your spirituality. Don't you think you all that? <laughs> Don't you think you all spiritual? The devil knows how to hit you with a situation that would demand your need for mercy. I have mercy on others because I experienced something about 15 years ago. If God wouldn't have given me mercy, I wouldn't have been here. So I thank God. That's why I have mercy in escrow because I visit my past every now and then. I don't live in it. I just visit it as a testimony. Do I have any co-signers? Where, where my riders are? Where my real people? Come on. Holler back at your boy. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, be merciful. Don't be extreme. Folk don't want to hang around humdrum folk. Why I don't go to everywhere with everybody? Everybody can't take Leroy. Leroy can be saved, but he just act a fool sometimes. Amen. I take Deacon Jones with me because he understand how I act up. I act up in the ball game. I, mean, I be acting a fool, but I'm saved. Well, I'm trying. Uh, yeah. Romans chapter 12. Let me skip through. Okay, well, chapter 3. Romans chapter 12, verse 3, it says, don't even think about it. Look at your neighbor next door and say, don't even think about it. Don't think about yourself too highly than you ought to. I know God has blessed you with a little confidence. You got a little something, but you ain't all that. There's somebody that you don't know got more cars than you, more houses than you, more money than you. You ain't all that. You, I mean, Denzel done got old, so I can't use Denzel. You know. Leroy. <laughs> you, 
you know, you know, it's the Bible says, think of yourself high, but not too high. Because when you think of yourself too high, what it does, it removes you from divine correction. Because you think that you're above it. I'm not being negative. I'm, I'm just trying to help someone. It says, but by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought to. But rather, think of yourself with a sober judgment. You've got to understand, okay, I got a little something, but I ain't nothing without God. I didn't say nothing, nothing. I ain't nothing without God. God is blessing you. That's one of the reasons why the Lord sort of teeter and giving us too much overflow because if we act in a fool with a one bedroom flat, what would you do if he were to give you a Maybox? Come on. Don't think of yourself that high. Stay in moderation. Um, let me help you. I love sweets. I do. I, 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 love, I love them. Let me help you. I love homemade stuff. But even too much sweets ain't good. But sweets all right. <laughs> let, let me just help somebody. They, they all right. But too much. You can drink too much water and it won't be good for you. You, you can sleep too much. You, you, it won't be good for you. You, anything that you uh, excessively do is not good. You're excessively doing it. It's not good. I can just name a whole litany, a litmus of, of, of certain things that we do that's good, but even too much of it. You know. It's not wrong with, with you know, spending time with Facebook. Let me just slow down for a minute, spending time with Facebook, but too much face in the Facebook. Ain't really good. Okay, that didn't work. Cause see, y'all got okay. Don't be mad. Look, look. You, you, you. Uh, I know you on social media. I am too, but too much of it. I mean, your bowels want some time. You know, I'm in the house. I mean, you, 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 you sitting, a, you sending a tweet. Come on, give yourself a little break. I leave my phone in my car when I'm exercising. I'm, in the, I'm, I'm exercising 6.30 a.m. And I'm leaving that stuff. I don't want to be contacted. I, let me have one hour of me. Amen. Amen. I've seen folks, they be working out with the phone. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Taking a picture of yourself. You can't find nobody to take a picture of you. I'm telling y'all some real life stuff. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, practice moderation. But then lastly, polish your moment. Polish your moment. Everyone say, polish your moment. First point is that we must provide more meaning. Number three, we must practice. Number two, we must practice moderation. And number three, we must polish your moment. Jesus now and his parents are attending, Minister Gladys, the feast of Passover in Jerusalem, as were their custom. Jesus is probably participating in the Bar Mitzvah, where he puts on the Teflon, he, he prays, he recites the Torah, uh, the uh, Septuagint, the Pentateuch, Mosaic law. Perhaps he's in the temple place. Perhaps he's in the synagogue. But what pens the writing? Jesus remains in the temple listening to the rabbis. He's so engulfed 
with the learning dynamic until he stays at the feet of the rabbis, Sister Nikki, for three days. And his parents are unaware of his absence. Their, his son, their son has been left behind in the temple place because Jesus' assignment is to live a balanced life. He said it in, uh, in verse 42 and 41. It talks about, and Jesus says, ah, I'm in my father's house. I know that you wanted me to celebrate all of the hooray and well, Miss Fi and the family reunion with cousin them. But I have to live a balanced life because when you have an assignment on your life, it demands for you to live a balanced life. I have to be in my father's house. This was a divine assignment statement. Jesus, according to the scripture, child of God, Jesus was 12 years of age and stayed behind in Jerusalem in the temple without parental permission. He stayed there. He did not ask Mary or Joseph uh, for permission in order to stay in the temple, my brother, for three days in Jerusalem. Uh, his parents did not know where he was. In fact, they were unaware that he was missing. Because you don't need permission to be where you're supposed to be. God help. Where you're supposed to be permits you to be there without others' consent. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, I don't need uh, permission to be where I've been ordained to be. In other words, your assignment licenses you to be there without a disclosure. When you are on divine assignment, people will try, they will try to commit you elsewhere. Yeah, they want you to hang out with them, but when you are on, it's not that you're anti-social. You are just on divine assignment. The Bible says that Jesus' parents went to look for him among friends and family and did not find him. Why? Because your assignment demands you to assign yourself in the, the temple for teaching. I'm going somewhere in verse 46 and 47. Uh, Jesus gives us a context clue that with your assignment requires your having teaching. You need a mentor, you need a coach, you, you need a teacher who can help you to stay on course. The Bible says Jesus was at the temple place sitting at the feet of rabbis. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, get some teaching. Uh, we get an under we get a divine assignment but we don't press pause for instructions look at your neighbor next door and say neighbor don't move too quickly don't move uh, too fast see the problem is we take the instructions of God as a license to go Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, uh, don't go until you're ready. Jesus says, I cannot do it. I got about 13 more years before I am released to Calvary. So I need to work. I need a mentor. I, I need to learn. I don't know all of it. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, stay in your assignment, but yet get some sense. Uh, get some teaching. You're not ready until you get some learning. Uh, stay in the institution of life. Stay in the classroom of learning. Stay in the classroom of lesson. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, don't go until you ready. The benefit behind Jesus is staying at the feet of the rabbis is verse 52. The Bible says, as a result, 
Jesus grew in wisdom, statue, and the favor of God and men. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, it's not in vain to take your time while learning sense. I know that you have some gifts, but you ain't ready to use it. Come on, Josh. I know that you have some gifts, but you ain't ready to use it. Uh, touch and tell your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, take your time. As a result, Jesus grew in wisdom, he grew taller, and he grew in the favor of God and of men. In other words, uh, because when you hang out with God, promotion and increase is not too far. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, that's a result when you hang out with God. That's a, that's a result when you take your time hanging out with God. Jesus took his time and he hung out for three days. I wish I had somebody. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, uh, Bishop is prophesying right now that you are about to have increase. You are about to get promotion because while others were going to the ball game, you were on your feet. You were on your knees. You were, you were praying. You were matriculating. You were polishing your moment. Uh, look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, this is a time for me and Jesus I'm gonna stay I'm gonna hang around I have favor not because I've been perfect I have favor not because I've been right all the time <laughs> look at your neighbor next door and say neighbor I have favor not because I've qualified I have favor because I've been hanging out with God <laughs> I have blessed, I'm experiencing my blessed place because I've been hanging out with God. I come to prophesy uh, to about 15 of you. God is about to give you favor because he sees what you've been doing in the dark room. He, he sees you hanging out. He, he sees you praising. In spite of what the enemy is trying to hit you with, you've not left the need to learn from God. You've not left the need to keep on praying you've not left the need to keep on praising and to studying God's word. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, just a little talk with Jesus. I need you to say it with me. Just a little talk with Jesus. polished I know he polished lift those hands everybody stand on your feet my time is up listen to me don't you let anyone upseat your need to spend quality time with God God will not make a demand on your spending quality time with him and not bless you afterwards. We talked about moderation, but there's a time that where you just need to spend, you need to lay at his feet. You need to prostrate yourself before him. Some of your spirits have been wounded because you're spending more time with them than him. And ain't nothing I can do about that but to remind you, to tell you to return to your first love. You know how it was when you first got saved? You couldn't spend enough time with God. And you cannot allow these comforts and the demands of others because they have these needs and emergencies to be your emergency. Because their emergency could be because they want accountable to priority. And now they have made their emergency yours. And I'm not saying that you don't assign yourself to the needs of people, but not at the risk of your not spending quality time with God. Why do you want God to pay your bills? Why do you want God to give you a debt-free anointing? So you can just go on vacation anytime you want, and that's good. But I'm hoping that you want God to give you all of these comforts so you can at least spend some time 
with the blessed one. The problem, and I've been talking to a whole bunch of pastors all over the world, and they've been telling me, hey, Bishop, come on, give me a perspective on this. What's going on? I say, folk been away for almost three years. This pandemic has kept our folk from church. And we've lost our sense of reverence for the need to hang out with God. I'm not a religious person. I'm a relational person. I don't too much hang around with religious people. I enjoy life. My family, my wife and I, we enjoy life. Amen. Can I encourage you right now? Just do me one favor. You can't do it tomorrow. This 4th of July, you're going to have people over and family members them and carrying on. I get that. But Tuesday, Wednesday, at least spend some quality time with the Lord. At least spend some quality time with the Lord. I know television is good, certain parts of it. So there are times where you got to like say one hour I'm just going to have some me me and God time not just me but we me and God and let me tell you something when you come from that kind of consecration you're going to grow in wisdom you're going to grow in the favor of God and of men I mean the supervisor that says no nah, we ain't going to She's not due a raise. She just got hired some kind of way. While he's sleeping, God will touch his mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chanel, he'll touch. And he'll put something, he'll put your name, he'll cause him to dream about you and say, you know what, I think I'm just going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote this person. I don't know why they, they only have one degree in this particular uh, position requires three, but at least... I think I'm, a, I'm just going to take a chance. You see, that's what happened when you spend time and hang out with God. God will just give you favor with men. I'm telling you, you just read it. I didn't say it. Jesus, the son of God, had enough sense to know that in his flesh, he needed the word. Not the God, but the man God. And he gives us a template. How much more should we do it? Let me tell you something. The drummer will get off your life. The heaviness will get off your life. The weight will get off your life. When you just spend some quality time with the Lord. And sometimes you've got to just not answer the phone. Don't, don't lie. Just don't answer it. Just norm it out. Just, just don't close the blinds. Just have some me time. Tell the kids, listen, you guys go have some fun. Come back in two hours because mommy need to have some time with the Lord. Well, what I'm going to be doing, just talk to him. Just sometimes you just need some rest from the hustle and bustle and the, the upheavals of life. Sometimes you just need a moment for yourself without feeling guilty. Can I tell you this? Thank you for your prayers. But it ain't nothing heavy about me. I got to lose a couple of pounds. I'm enjoying life. I should be. I'm almost 60 years old. I should be enjoying. If you don't know what you're supposed to do when you get close to 60, you mess it up. I don't, I have problems, but I don't wear them. That's why I don't look my age. As a reason. Amen. Look at y'all ain't said, you have to agree with me. I know. You got to spend some time. The Bible says he will preserve your youth. Stress won't. But when you spend quality time with the Lord, he will preserve you. I say that humbly. Amen. So as we leave from this place, I got two more minutes. I want to say this to you like never before. Polish your moment with God. Stop waiting on other folks' consent before you find time with you and God. Tell yourself, self, 
I'm going to spend some time with God this week. Okay, you don't have to know me to trust. Trust me, on, just trust the word. When you spend some time with God, the Bible says you will grow in wisdom and in the favor of men. The Bible says he grew physically. I believe that when his, when his parents found him, he was taller. God is going to heighten you so that things on earth can look strangely dim. You can look over that instead of the thing looking over you. So, Father, I thank you for this message. I made it comical. It's different. I'm a different preacher. I present it differently. But I reference the word. I show them. I want these students that when they come here, they're going to get something. Not entertainment, Father information all of these scriptures that I gave to them God as they wrote them down help them to revisit it help them to reminisce in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ help them to know that balance is important balance is important have a balanced life much of anything, even if it's good, is not good. And so, Father, I pray for a strong anointing to be released over this house for balance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you remain standing, given consent I had to know that so that so that I can proceed with this with this consecration out of respect of the COVID I would not hold the baby but brother Jones who is the biological father of this beautiful angel sinless angel has given us permission by way of the biological mother, sister, Ebony. I've been calling this baby Ebony ever since she was little. But it's Ebony, Ebony. Look, Brother Carter, we love you. Amen. The Bible is quite clear in the book of Matthew. I'm told that the biological father and surrogate father are here, the grandparents, and etc. The godparents. This ritual of confirmation is in scripture that when the Bible says from the book of Joshua that as for me in this house we're going to serve the Lord gives us a context clue that the parents can give parental confirmation. To, to rear this baby under the parenthesis of God's holy word. Children are very special to God. In the book of Matthew, when the kids wanted to touch the, the garments of Jesus and the disciples became indignant and said, no, 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 don't do it. He says, no, 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 allow them to come close to me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. He sort of allegorically defined the kingdom as likened to children because you can't get in the kingdom unless you come as a child. But that, that baby is teachable, tender, warm, strong. And that's what we need to be as children of God. And that baby can never out-old the parent, outgrow the parent. 
and to the mother that son will always be her baby boy hallelujah you just when you look at him you just want to kiss him I see little Nikki she ain't she ain't paying me no mind she looking at the baby the It's a beautiful thing to bring these children into the world. And for that reason, we anoint this baby. The Bible gives us a context clue that when the baby is old enough to make its own decision to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the parent will make that confession on their behalf. has to be some water contact with this immersion until the baby is old enough to get baptized. I know this baby with blessed oil. And he don't like that. And I pray that God will receive this beautiful child into the faith of God by way of parental confirmation that as for them in this house, we are going to serve the Lord. And as much as we chose parents who are godly to keep the same wearing as if the baby is at your house. And so we bless these godparents, biological parents, surrogate parents, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we call this baby blessed in the Lord. Clap your hands to the Lord. a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give thanks for he has given Jesus Christ his only son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give as the deacons make it, Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the rich say, I am poor. Because of what Lord has, Lord has done. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Oh, giving thanks. Those that are online, if you want to give right now, go to that safe site on PayPal and make a Make a gift to City Cathedral. Use your card, your credit card, your bank card. Those of you who are in the audience, it's on widescreen. Be a blessing to this church. Oh, because Jesus Christ, his only son, give thanks. Wait for her to give thanks. To the Holy One give thanks. I want you to follow these ushers from the rear. Let these servant brothers lead you. And I want you to hold that cup in the left and the bread in your right. Hold it until the finish of the reading of God's holy writ. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. 